Well, good morning and welcome to the First Presbyterian Church of Bill Forum. And everybody knows Dr. Lloyd. Yeah, yeah, we are. Really <laughs> Sometimes too so, well, I think. So, yeah. and, and we are we are really delighted. I Damon asks that I do something formal at the beginning because the owl's on yeah. and he sends this on to other people who are sitting in the tree somewhere watching, I guess. Um, but we're really pleased by the relationship with Hastings College and First Presbyterian sure. Church. And so you have to do the entire historical context here in <laughs> a few minutes for yeah. tennis. Yeah. But thank you very much. For oh, yeah. Thank you for the invitation. And the uh, coffee will be ready at any time. If you want to gesture on the screen. This is the second time that I get to be part of the service here that this month. And so Bonnie yeah. said, you're going to need some new material. <laughs> <laughs> if you assume once a year, you can sort of tread out a lot of the other stuff and no one quite remembers. So thank you very much. So as Sharon said, and all of you know who I am, uh, Rich Lloyd, but happy to be here. What I thought I would do, instead of sort of walking you through sort of historical mission and purpose of the college over the years, is just first ask if you have any questions about the college. If there's just anything you would like to know, most of you stay in close touch with the college, but there is a lot going on and a lot of changes forthcoming and a lot of great work that we're doing. So I would be happy just to provide an update if you want to start there before I sort of give some comments about um, what I see both as the historical relationship, but also then some of the challenges to that historical relationship going forward. So just anything you'd like to know about. Doug, I have a question. Do you know how much we appreciate you coming back? We are so very kind. Hold that judgment for, you for a few more years. <laughs> then, we'll, then, we'll, then we'll see. Invite me back. We'll see. But that's very kind of you. It's an honor to be back. I was really. delighted to read in the paper that there were 40 students that had enrolled in nursing. Uh, yes. I mean, that's like it used to be. Yeah. And that's fantastic. So let me. Uh, People ask, I have a lot of questions actually about the nursing program. So let me just give a quick update on how that works. Some of you have heard this before, so I apologize if it's repetitive. But let me just give that. One, it's just great if you drive down 7th Street to see all the signs on, yes. on the new medical office building. But I was even asked the other day when we think about the mission of the institution is sort of, well, we've not been, the college itself has not had a nursing program in the past. It's partnered with Mary Lanning, with Creighton, and with others over the years. But how does that sort of fit with admission? And I said, well, and you'll hear me say this again during the sermon, because I like to repeat it. Our you know, foundational pillars are learning, faith, and service. And service to others in healthcare professions is a noble profession. And so it fits and aligns exactly with the Hastings College mission to be in service to our neighbor. And particularly as we think about keeping care local in the region, we need to produce more healthcare workers, not just nurses, but we need more healthcare professionals who choose for more rural settings. To practice care. So our hope is that the graduates, the way we've designed the recruiting strategy, we hope that the graduates, since many of will be coming from central and western Nebraska, will then choose to stay in the area and populate our health care centers. So the way that model actually works then is the nursing program itself, the courses in the nursing curriculum, which is a three-year curriculum, are taught at Mary Lanning in the new Bryan Educational facility. If you haven't had a chance to come see it, we cut the ribbon this week. It's absolutely stunning. I'm happy to give you a tour anytime or have a group come up for a tour. You're always most welcome. Our goal is 30 students a year, and the 30 number is based just on the number of clinical spaces we have. So when you're thinking about, we can do a lot of didactic work, we can lecture to more students, but it really becomes the clinical partners that help dictate the total number. But it will be 30 a year that would enter in the relationship with Hastings College, and we actually did this in the past with Creighton, when Creighton had a four-year program out at Hastings, is that the students will take roughly two years. It doesn't work on a chronological two plus two but they'll roughly take two years of education for Hastings College faculty. So instead of replicating or duplicating the general education curriculum and staff, which we have in Lincoln, we partner with Hastings College, with our college, to do that delivery. The students can also live then on the Hastings College campus. Not required, but they do have to follow the same housing residency requirement as all Hastings College students. So if you're within a 30-mile hub, then you can elect to live at home or commute. But if you're outside that coming to the college, then you are part of the residential community. As members then of the campus at Hastings College, they are Hastings College students. They get to interact and do everything a Hastings College student does. The only exception at this point is they cannot participate in varsity athletics. And the reason they can is because they're actually Bryan students. They're enrolled as a Bryan student, not as a Hastings College student. 
one of the other things we did in this agreement, which I think will really help going forward, is we wanted to celebrate then the liberal arts component of Hastings College, even within a healthcare college curriculum. So Brian's curriculum is fairly prescriptive. We lay it all out. We do have a liberal arts requirement for Brian, but most of it is clinical education work. So if you're at Hastings College and you're doing your A&P, you're doing your psych class, you're doing then the general education at Hastings, but because of the arts and glass blowing and all the other interesting courses we have, we didn't want to exclude Brian's students from that opportunity. So built within the agreement, the way we do the sharing, built within the agreement is that Brian's students at the Hastings location during the course of their curricular time can take additional 10 hours of Hastings College elective coursework and that dollar, that tuition bill never reaches the students. It actually goes through Brian. So Brian will pay that tuition cost in addition to the cost share that we already have established. What we hope then is that students settle in and they say, oh my gosh, yeah, look what's happening in the arts, look what's happening in the theater, look at the music program, that they will sign up or an additional class in foreign language or in the literature's humanities. So that is our hope. We have a couple of students doing that already. So one of the ways we wanted to symbolize that effort was when you come up and see our facility, and it, it just is stunning this way, we intentionally left a lot of blank wall space because we wanted it to be populated with Hastings College student art and permanent collection art. Mm -hmm. So we want any visitor to Mary Lanning who goes into a clinical education space to also see the interplay between the liberal arts, between the fine arts, and healthcare. Right, that that really is the goal is to celebrate that relationship. So we got the art hung just in time for this past <laughs> Tuesday ribbon cutting. But everybody who came up who'd been there before just said the space is different now. It just makes it different. So we got some permanent collection art in there. We also have then some student art. And as the Brian students start to populate, it's meant to be a rotational gallery. Um, we hope again to rotate it out with student art, and certainly some Brian students yeah. will be able to display their art. So that was really the intention. So the way the model works in sort of the pure business model is that for Mary Lanning and for Brian Health, it's about workforce. So this is a central Nebraska workforce strategy to populate healthcare centers in Nebraska, central Nebraska and western Nebraska. Some students may choose to go to Lincoln or Omaha. What we have seen is most of the graduates who come out of Lincoln, our Lincoln program at Bryan, stay in the Lincoln Omaha Beltway area. They populate a Bryan Center within that area. So we're hoping to replicate that same strategy out here. For Hastings College, the wonderful thing is we now have a nursing program at Hastings College that we're a partner in. We didn't have to build it, we didn't have to accredit it, and we didn't have to yeah, so and that's a long process. And all of a sudden we can do healthcare. And it's the first pass, we will do more. Nursing is the biggest first piece. It also then gives us room and board revenue if the students live on campus. It gives us two years of tuition share for those students taking classes at Hastings College. And then adding 100 plus more students just to the Hastings community is great for new audience. We didn't, it's not a substitution effect, it's not from an existing program and distributing actually coming for nursing and we didn't have a program before. So that revenue increase, just the population increase, the enrollment increase will be really beneficial to Hastings College in the coming years as we start to get the top line growth model. So yeah, it's 100 plus students. Okay, now I just rolled all that up within a couple minutes. Let me pause. Did that create any more questions? Well, Jenny well, and I got to be there. And yeah. is, just as you described, it is amazing. But we've had people say, well, we couldn't be there. Is there any chance that if, if we brought somebody with us up there when they're actually in business, would we be intrusive or no, no. would they would we be welcome? Absolutely welcome. Really? The we only, could walk uh, through. The only thing is if we could know ahead of time, ah. our colleagues would certainly be happy to let you in. There's FOB access into the student side. It's just security measures. Okay. So you have to have FOB access to get into the student so side. So call ahead. So yeah. let me know if, if there's a church group that wants to go up and see it. There's just anybody who wants to see it. We're happy to show it off. And we're just so proud of it. And it really is a Hastings College built facility. A lot of the dollars helping the 
built that portion of that medical office building are for that came from Hastings College supporters and donors, right? To make sure that this was a three-way partnership. So again, I'd be honored to show that my colleagues would show. Well, we will have nine Brian employees full time living in Hastings. I'm thinking time. of retired yeah. faculty that yeah. I see a lot. Anytime. But we wouldn't need we wouldn't want to take someone like your time or anything. No, no, we have to spend our time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But could we call and get me out of this meeting with us? I'd be happy to do that and say, okay, come to this meeting. So they would walk and we could just walk through. And yeah, you can just walk through. It doesn't take a long time, but it's really nice. And if you know, classes aren't in session in the skills lab or the simulation center, then the students can show you how the simulation center works. Because one of the things we've seen in clinical education, uh, we have an eight bed simulation center in Lincoln. It's two bed here. So you have mannequins. It's a repetitional practice of care. So you have um, mannequins that we can create simulations within the mannequins. They're high fidelity mannequins. And so the students go into the room, and then we've got a one-way mirror in the recording studio, and the faculty member runs the scenario. So you're treating a patient, and then you can throw a complication into that treatment, and the student is in the room and has to respond. And the whole time that's happening, we're recording it. And then once they're done, the faculty member goes to the debriefing room and can show the student what they did well, but then also where they missed an opportunity for better care. And then they can go back and do it again. So it's just consistent repetition practice to make sure. And the mannequins, again, they're really amazing in what we can do with them. Um, so we'd be happy to demonstrate that. We have a, a skills lab as well, named after Judy Sandin. Yeah. You want to come see that too. Um, but we're happy to show you what that looks like. It, it's really, it's really state of the art. And just again, allows you to continue to practice that care uh, before you go on, a, on a, a real patient. I wonder if you thought of the word healer hub. The, yeah. With the alliteration, I, I wish I, I wish I could take credit for that, or, or um, but I, I can't. So in Lincoln, the mascot, even though we don't have sports teams or anything else, um, Brian is known as the Blue Healers. So the healer is the mascot of Brian, and it is intentional, right? The double entendre yeah. of, the, of the healer um, is because they become healers, and so that is the mascot. So we use it when and, and where we can. So in fact, if there was one meeting in which they were trying to figure out if right where these went, what would we call the Brian students at Hastings? Are they Hastings healers? Are they Bronx? So you know, that's, uh, that was even the discussion on how we're going to market the students. That but yeah, thank you for that question. George? Uh, tell us about the Gray Center and what's going on in media. Yeah, so we're, we're doing a number of things across campus. So fall of 24, so we're, I, we're just really excited about what's ahead for Hastings College. Some things I, I wish I could announce today, we'll be able to announce within the next month or so, but we've got some really, really good news. And some of that, again, will continue to impact our relationship um, with Presbyterian Church. So just really excited for what's ahead. Uh, I've been embargoed, I think that's the term. So <laughs> I, I'm, aware of, I'm aware of some good news. A few select others are aware of the really, really good news, and we can't say anything <laughs> until, until the people who want to, yeah, Greg, Greg's over there sending it, because Greg knows. We, we can't release the good news uh, until the organization says, go ahead, go forth, right? So when they say go forth, we will we will shout it out because it's, it's just really exciting. Uh, we're thrilled about what's ahead, and that's just one thing. What we've looked at within the Gray Center, so I will say this about the college. Someone said, are you going to need more space? And the answer to that is really almost no. We have the campuses built to serve more students than we currently serve. It, just is. So we're right at about a thousand students this year when we have the Brian students in. So we're seeing growth and that's really important. But we have a campus infrastructure that can serve 1,100 students. So right now what we're really looking at, so we, we built for capacity and so we have opportunities. So if we have growth, we don't have to necessarily go build. We have to clean up, shore up. Uh, housing will be the next big piece because we are out of housing and it does need some shoring up. But around the rest of the campus, it's just getting people in the right spots. So in media, what we have done is this, this sort of the transition. So for those of you who may remember, at one time, Hastings College sort of led in the athletic world. This was mostly geared towards athletics. Uh, in the broadcast space, we were sort of the, the college ahead of everyone else in broadcast journalism. So, in, and we were so ahead, in fact, that we got invited, our students got invited to NAI national tournaments to run those tournaments and do all the broadcasting from them, including then when ESPN took over those tournaments. So we were always sort of really, really way ahead. And then as change happened, as things went through, everybody sort of caught up. And now we've gone to streaming and everything else. So it's not quite the same as the heavy fixed base cameras and having the same kind of setup as we've done. So what we're looking at doing within the Gray Center, beyond adding eSports, which is just remarkable to 
go in, I'm still trying to figure this one out, um, you know, to go in and watch students who are watching the screen while I'm watching them on the screen, and somehow everybody's excited and yelling and screaming about this. Uh, so I'm still catching up on that. But we have partnered um, with Score Vision, a company out of Omaha, and so that company, it, it's a billboard, but it's a computer software program. So when you go out to Hastings College, the new scoreboard in the uh, sort of stadium is a Score Vision scoreboard. It's actually been a computer program that helps us run a game time experience. And students who are participating in that and media now get to learn everything from coding to marketing, how are we going to sell ads, how are we going to include those ads, they write all the scripts, and so the replays. So they're learning through the software program how to produce sort of game time real experience for students. And a lot of that then runs either off the phone or off an iPad or a mobile device. It doesn't necessarily require the same amount of fixed paced cameras that we've had in the past. We're partnering with Score Vision, who out of Omaha, it's an alum who owns the company, one of the co-owners as an alum of Hastings. They're in over 200 high schools across the country. They're in colleges and professional sports, and the company continues to grow. So we want to become the, the campus brand partner of Score Vision and create a Score Vision Academy. And by doing so, we can do three things. We can have our current students get credentialed and badged by an industry leader. So part of this is not just a degree, it's a certification and badging opportunity that you have gone through really becoming a social media content manager. Sports is the vehicle, the skill set is social content. So you can go anywhere when you're done, but then you would have that certificate when you're done from score vision. So an industry leader saying, you, you know how to do all of this work. Secondly, when we want to build an internship model for all of our students so they can go into these companies or the arenas or the centers where it's being used and participate so they build those additional skills. And then we want to reach back to those 200 high schools across the country. It gives us a focused target recruiting area instead of just throwing a wide net. We want to go to those high schools and say, if you would like additional skills and if you would like a brand partner, one of our students to become one of your brand managers to help you with content and delivery, then we'll make that link. And then the hope, so this is how we look at now near far, then the hope is that in the summer, we can bring students from those respective high schools to campus to participate in a summer school vision academy. And then, of course, we get them on campus. We try to recruit them and say, if you'd like to continue that work, we can give you an industry certification as we go. So we're in our really year and a half, 18 months of planning, um, but it's on its way. And so we hope to launch by next summer the full program. So to be announced that once we get it all detailed after, but we're excited about that. The other thing we've looked at within the Gray Center when we think about media and graphic design is just how to reuse that space because again, traditionally the way it was used is not how it's currently used with streaming and platform media. It's not quite the same. So Sharon knows just some things change. What we're seeing in students instead of the radio station that used to be there is now students are running podcasts out of those same booth spaces. So it's being used, it's just being used in a different way. So I was guest on this first student podcast of the year last week, I think it came out this week. So again, it's that's the goal is to sort of repurpose some of those spaces to meet student interest in needs and industry needs going forward. We're also looking at who might populate that space as well as a communication center or a business center because we're just running out of some sort of classroom space in a few of the buildings, but not all. So that, that's yet to come, but we're excited about it. So we've added a sports media minor to our curriculum. So there is a curricular option for students to get a minor. There's industry certification and a professional pathway already built in. And they, they want to continue to the careers. So thanks for the question, George. Uh, what else would you like to know? This is great. I mean, yeah, we, I, can reload, I can reload the computer. Don't ask the questions in the church. <laughs> I, I'm actually not. I, I, I timed it this morning before everybody came to the house. I, mean, I think Greg, I'm at four and a half to five minutes total. So great. No, no, there will be no questions asked. What else um, can I have shared? Rich, there are a whole range of health services that, that I know Brian teaches yes. in various campuses. Um, what are the possibilities for adding some of the others? I know radiology has been a program in Hastings yeah. College for some time. Yes, it has. So Mary Lanning, again, it's a really strong program. As you can imagine, the openings in nursing, which are yeah. you know, I mean, just lots of them, but we see that replicated in other areas, and it's really around you know, tech roles, um, so surge techs, med techs, and others. So Mary Lanning has the rad tech program. It's always had that independently um, you know, accredited through Mary Lanning. So we're just having conversations. We do sonography in Lincoln. They're not the same, but they have some of the same platforms. 
And so a number of our students in Lincoln actually to do sonography rotations and clinical work come to Mary Lanning. So that's already been happening. That wasn't anything new. So one of the conversations is just once we get nursing sort of figured out, then what's next? And so we really built built the educational facility with that assumption of what's next. And partly it can be on the tech side. So just how would we collaborate? And that really is the key, not to replicate, but to collaborate because no one has unlimited resources. So how do we collaborate? But in addition to that, Brian has associate's degrees to doctoral degrees in Lincoln. So one of the things we've also just talked about is on the clinical side, there are a lot of openings, but there's also openings throughout the entire healthcare system. That would include finance and accounting and marketing and everything else. And Brian does offer um, sort of a certificate in healthcare management. It's not a full degree, but there is a certificate in healthcare management. We offer it at both the undergraduate and graduate level. So we've thought about, again, once we get nursing running and, and make sure we get that all operationalized, is taking the catalogs and asking again the next question. So for the business department at Hastings, finance, econ, psychology, sociology, do we, would we have students that might have an interest in an overlay of while they're undergraduates getting a healthcare management certificate, those hours transfer into MBA programs so they can always add on later, but then we can get an internship in one of the facilities. So Mary Lanning, uh, Brian Regional in Grand Island, Brian Regional in Kearney, we can certainly do internship work and the jobs also are plentiful in those areas. And the biggest emerging area in most healthcare settings, as it is in a lot of businesses, is just in data analytics, right? Some business and data analytics. So how do we help think about that with educational management records on health records to just the system functions? So we're looking at what else could we do to add value to the partnership. But first and foremost, we just need to get that first full cohort class next year full. But I'm excited about what's possible and what's ahead. And we've been trying to do that even with UNMC and others. So we have agreements with UNMC. They're not meant to be competitive against one another. This is we're going to all have to work together if we're going to figure out health care uh, in Nebraska. We just all have to work together and not assume it's, it's one in front of the other. Mm -hmm. We just have to partner. So we're in lots of conversations. There's a statewide conversation in healthcare, which I'm part of on what are we doing and how do we do more of it and do it together. So yeah. This isn't a question, just a comment. When I read from people who um, have gone to Hastings College and go on to professional careers, I mean yes. even historically, yes. one of the things you'll see many times is they'll refer to, but I always appreciate my years in Hastings College because that's where I learned to love this. That's where I learned to love something that isn't even related to my career now, but it also makes my life better. You know that again. Poetry, that yeah. um, literature, <laughs> the music, the opportunity to sing, the opportunity to perform, you know, all those things that um, don't necessarily match what you're describing. They don't, they aren't specific skill sets, yes. but they truly do make a more interesting life for many of the people that go through it. And I see that. I've read that a lot in comments even after dad passed away. You know, yes. so many comments about, yes, I am this physician running this, but. I always remember how much I learned to love literature. I learned to love, I got to sing, I got to do these things. So that's what I think could be such a strong component yeah. still. Yeah, so I, they I, have time. I, I, it, was one of the, it was one of the questions that I was going to tee up. Oh. We went through, no, just sort of mission and history documents. Because I think it's really fascinating. So over time, Hastings College and its missional statements and its philosophy or purpose statements and its core value statements, call them what you will, and oftentimes writing those in concurrence with the church early on, the liberal arts were intentional, right? This is not an after effect. <laughs> the notion um, and the, the liberal arts themselves, the, the traditional trivium and quadrivium are considered the freeing arts. The freeing arts are those, right, that set a person free. And they're, they're important to a meaningful life, not just necessarily specific to a skill. Right. And one of the challenges we continue to face, this is the conversation, and it is, we see this nationwide, not in Nebraska, not specific to Hastings College, is when we look at the cost of education, when we think about access and affordability, and we think about time to degree, and we sometimes think about student loan debt, often students, of course, if they're taking on debt to do it. There is sort of just an understanding that the college will lead me successfully to that sort of career path, that there's an implied relationship there. And what I have said is that's always been the case. That doesn't diminish what we still want to accomplish is that we're still going to have you do a whole bunch of other stuff because we also think that's really, really important. 
the challenge is, is does then the student feel that that's really, really important? And does a parent or support person who's part of the educational transaction, do they feel that it's really important? So we're simply often asked the question, this is where I want to go. I want you to make sure I get there. I want to get there as fast and efficiently as possible for as low cost as possible. We get all of that. And what we're trying to say is that we're going to sort of also interrupt that, that sort of speed to career. We're going to interrupt that by doing a whole bunch of other things that either we haven't articulated well enough about why and or the you know individuals wanting to come don't understand the why themselves. And so there's not, I would say it's a healthy tension. There's always been a tension. I mean, the top majors at Hastings College ever since I was a student at Hastings in the 80s still remain sort of business, teacher education, done, you know, the sciences, thinking about going on to medical school or health or going on to professional and graduate school. And then we start to see a little bit of movement in that sort of fourth and fifth slot over time. Psychology now is in that spot. So psychology is there. Um, and now we're seeing healthy human performance really grow. So we have a number of students on the campus who participate in athletics. They're interested in nutrition and health and wellness. And so they naturally, a lot of them gravitate to a human performance model in exercise science. So that program is really growing for us. The other ones we think of, the humanities and the fine arts, are sort of in that middle tier or lower in terms of majors. Doesn't mean in terms of total students served. And so we really still articulated against many headwinds right now in the country um, that college is a utility, um, it's a service, it's a supply chain model. Um, and in many ways, Brian does that in healthcare, is that we still want students to make sure that they've taken the time to not only just have depth in an area or two, we desire that, but they have breadth in a bunch of areas so that we can. And so the articulation we try to say is we are, we're going to make sure you're ready for what's next. And everybody wants meaningful work. So we want to do that, your vocation and your calling. But we want to make sure you're also prepared for what's next after that. And then we presented you with the skills to be able to adapt. You're flexible enough to work within a changing environment. And also alongside that, that you feel prepared to lead a life of meaning and purpose. And that you don't see it transactionally between career and life. And that we try to create an integrated vocational model. Um, that We're trying to articulate that. Sometimes it's just like, how do we do that well? And so breadth and depth right now for many, many liberal arts colleges is really the discussion. And given the challenges in higher education, given the financial challenges in higher education that many, many schools are facing, those are decisions they're making. So it is not uncommon every day in the higher education journals to see, now this is happening at state schools and universities as well. So in Nebraska and all over, it's not just private liberal arts colleges, but we are seeing where colleges are having to make choices, financial choices for sustainable structures. The first things teed up on often a list the prioritization list are the liberal arts. So often what's up there first that hard to define, hard to quantify, hard to determine if it, what value it really has, but we know we can put a business and an accounting person, right? And we have to sort of really figure out what that balance is. So we have, against those headwinds, try to say, no, we are a liberal arts college. But what's interesting is when the church founded the college, that was central to the mission of that institution, right? those skills and um, attributes of a well-rounded education, the old term we used to use, are really been, the, it's the desire of the church. So um, in many ways, we have to always go back and realign with mission and say, you know, what was the flywheel? How were we founded? Why were we founded? Where are we at with mission? And then how do we continue to support that? Or does it need to, to flex and adapt at some level? But those are, yeah. So just this week, two, one in Nebraska and one um, in a nearby state just announced they're going through budget cuts. And I could, I could just tell you what's going to be on that list. And then I saw it. That's exactly what was on that list. It's the arts. It's the music. Right. It's English. It's history. It's religion. It's philosophy. It's political science. On down. It's just on. They're going to invest in career oriented programs where they have student demand. It is a business, right? You have to look at the input side. <laughs> and the input is saying, this is what we want. So how do we do that? Um, yeah, so th those are conversations we're having. And, and they're really, I like to be a part of those. They're, they're actually fun conversations to try to figure out what's that right balance. And so we also say, boy, if we just hold to what is our mission, if, if everybody around us goes in one direction, right? If everybody goes to swim in that ocean, using some blue ocean strategy as the metaphor of the book, 
if everybody thinks that's the ocean to be in, pretty soon that ocean is going to be yeah. full, and you're going to actually look more like an outlier different by just holding true to your mission. <laughs> you're going to say, oh, yeah, you're very different. How did you create market differentiation? Well, we just stayed true to the mission for 140 years. Everybody else is the one who changed, and now they're all the same again. So I think that's been the challenge, as many schools have tried to create market differentiation by moving in a direction. They don't move alone. Others take a look at the same data and move in that same direction, and now they're not different again, and now they have to compete for limited reasons. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. So that, that's where it's at. But um, they are challenges. They're real challenges for higher education, and not just in the privates. We're, we're seeing that across um, state schools and universities. <laughs> What else? This is this is really nice. So, we've already logged off on this, so I'm good. What else would you like to know, or anything about those kinds of conversations? I think you're remodeling in the in the central kind of grassy area. I guess you can just talk about what's going on there as far as the improvements that you told me about one time in in the courts and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, there's a number of. I'm often asked what are sort of the top five things in higher education that we're, everybody's thinking about in higher education. And a lot of it is from Supreme Court rulings just through its affirmative action, its legacy admissions, um, if you're building a model for legacy admissions. Affirmative action and legacy admissions does not affect many schools because you just don't have then more students asking to get in than you've got slots. So it's on how you shape a class. So those conversations are around, assume you've got 500 spots and you've got 3,000 students willing to deposit. You're going to have to shape those 500 slots. So do you do it under legacy? Do you do it under affirmative action? How do you create the class you desire for the mission that you have within that model. And many schools simply are not in that position where they've got the, you know, that many students lined up for a limited number of slots. So in many ways, it's important to us to, to talk about those things, but it may not directly apply into the day-to-day -day work. The other top issues are free speech issues. Um, anymore, it's, it's colleges are finding they're supposed to be, the college is a great place for public square conversations. So it is the place that we are supposed to, and it's also why churches founded colleges and didn't just maintain church uh, attendance that way, is in that public square, we are supposed to, on our behalf and on our students' behalf, to be able to encounter ideas different than our own, not just be in a bubble of ourselves and like-mindedness, and be able to challenge those ideas with one another in a very respectful way, um, so that we learn, right? The, the way as Scott Fitzgerald used to say it, first rate intelligence is the ability to hold two opposing ideas in your head at the same time and still retain the ability to function. You should be able to hold two opposing ideas in your head. And what we see so often anymore is the only idea I hold in my head is my idea that's reinforced by everybody else who has exactly the same idea as I do. And we assume then that's the majority view. And it's not always the case. So how does an institution of learning, right, learning, take those ideas and create a public square and a public space for conversation that isn't just shouting down or and that's a real challenge right now is sort of thinking about when you think about beyond the college being able to do that our ability to be able to do that is a challenge and so how we model that um, it, it is really really important to colleges and then the other is really just for so many institutions uh, it's just the business model for many schools the model that was successful for decades was that you recruited students out of high school, they came to college, and you really sort of built a residential four-year model for growth and learning of students. But what we know in parts of the country, it's hitting the Midwest, not yet hitting Nebraska, in parts of the country, the number of students coming out of high school is on sharp decline. So in higher education, it's called sort of the demographic enrollment cliff that many, many schools, we have an oversupply, sort of a spots for that audience is the point. So in many states, you're seeing in the Northeast, you're seeing a 15% decline in high school graduates. So if you have been in that traditional business of high school to college, and that's your recruiting market, and you don't change the number of opportunities that the number of available students is going down, is you're just competing more and more for a limited resource. And so how do you do it? And so that's where we're seeing the real pressure there is a huge audience of adult learners who have some college, whether that was through post-secondary education, certificate, content-based learning, uh, community colleges, who are not sure what to do with those hours, how to put those hours back into a degree program if they want to go into second wave, third wave careers. So some schools have moved in that direction as well. 
Nebraska, the primary recruiting markets for Hastings College um, it, for 30 years have been Nebraska first, Colorado second, and then there's always been sort of an emerging state. That emerging state is often based on just relationships. We have a coach or a member of, you know, someone from our choir who's leading our choir came from a state and knows five high schools because they've been a clinician in those schools. So for us this year it was Arizona. So we're seeing an increase in students from Arizona. We have an alum who lives there who works on behalf of the college recruiting. We have a number of graduates who live in Arizona. We have a number of retirees who have connections to Arizona. And there are not a lot of liberal arts colleges in Arizona. And so um, so that's been an emerging market. 20, over 20 students came out of Arizona this year and it continues to grow. So those are really the three areas. What's nice is in Nebraska, high school graduates will continue to increase slightly, not massively, through 2035. So we have a window of time to sort of sort this out. Nearby states are already seeing a decline. Nebraska sort of, I would just say, is, is flat. It's not a huge increase, but it's not a steep decline. Colorado, and it's not everywhere in Colorado, it's not everywhere in Nebraska, but Colorado in our primary markets continues to grow, and Arizona continues to grow. So as we look to our future of how to be successful, at least where we already have brand presence and have a history of building relationships and alums in those communities, um, we feel like at least the, the odds on our side to continue to be successful. And Nebraska, though, the shifting is it's Lincoln, Omaha, Bellway. It's the northeast up by Norfolk, and it's, it's the Tri-Cities where we're seeing growth when you look at the latest census data. So we're working on those things. On campus, what we're trying to finally figure out as we head is while we may not need a classroom except cleaning up or perhaps technology, we have a lot of available space for learning. It is what is the function and purpose of other buildings going forward, and we are just tight on housing. So we had architects on campus a week ago that went in and did an entire inventory of our housing infrastructure just to let us know deferred maintenance, here's what we could do, here are some things you need to be aware of. We get roughly over 90 plus percent occupancy this fall. Part of that was students are choosing to live on campus, um, but some of them are choosing it because there's also not available housing in Hastings. Mm -hmm. So the housing market in Hastings is so tight that students who used to choose them to live in the community are not finding available spots and or if they are an increase in cost and realizing that what we offer at the college is actually now looks like a good deal when it may not have looked like a good deal a few years ago. And so they're asking us, you know, hey, we would stay if, and so we're trying to figure out what the if is. And if we were to look at building something, if we're thinking we're going to continue to have modest growth um, in another year or two, particularly with the Bryan program, we're going to be out of housing. And it takes 18 months or so to build. <laughs> so at a minimum, if you know what you're doing. And so it's already thinking two years out to try to manage. Um, and if we have good enrollment next year with people wanting to stay on campus, it'll all, it's already tight. It's going to get much, much tighter. So we took one of our apartment complexes that was what we call a four by two, four bedrooms, two baths. Everybody had their own room. And to meet the needs of students this year, um, and again, it's a trial for us, and we're hoping students will find it, and we priced it at a, at a point that was in between the four by two and traditional dorms, but it's six by two. So we did then say, in that apartment, we will put two beds back in a room that used to be a single, so like a dorm room, but you're still within an apartment complex where you have two bathrooms, a living room, and a kitchen. So you still have that. So you've got the apartment level, then you've got the dorms and some singles or two by, you know, and now you've got a six by two. But we did that to make sure we could meet student demand and student need. So those are the things that we're focusing on. So um, we're also looking now at upgrading our track. So the outdoor track needs resurfacing. Just everything's on a, on a timeline of when you have to come back and do things. We did the football stadium this past summer. Um, a lot of new roofs and everything else from hail damage from a year and a half ago. So the campus is looking beautiful. Track would be next in terms of one of the outdoor space. We also, if you haven't been on campus, please do. There's now a Taylor deck. So we made a deck off Taylor. It was always there. We built it as an outdoor deck for students. We've repurposed the library, outdoor furniture. Again, supporters and donors have helped us do that. So all new furniture on the outside of the library. You're welcome to come bring copy and sit. It's a beautiful space. And even the interior of the library, the first floor, all the books have been moved up to the second floor um, through the process of upgrading the collection. And so the, the main space of the library now is just a community space, just great study space great opportunities to be there and everybody's always of course welcome to do that and then around Alban and Brock and we're just waiting on materials so we're redoing the outdoor basketball courts the sand volleyball area upgrading the infrastructure for electricity so we can bring more food trucks in when we're having outdoor events 
and then they'll resurface the basketball court and they were the students were kind when i made a request to add pickleball lines to uh, to that surface they they understood it so we'll also have two pickleball courts at least the lines for those on that that outdoor space so we really when we sort of define who we are and what we're best at and then obviously hope the market responds to that that people still find that of value is we're really a together learning environment what we do is we really do it on 120 acres we do it really well jenny to your point we do it both with depth and with breadth. And then we send everybody out um, and say, now go and be great and be successful. And thank you for you know, making the communities better. So we're really looking at how to further invest in where we spend most of our time is here in this community on that campus. And the phrase we also have used is one campus, one community. And I think I, I got more people commenting on just the visual signage that Bryan and Hastings College were now part of Mary Landing Healthcare. And so that's the other thing we're really trying to say is we are blessed in this community, 25,000 member community that has three colleges. We have an amazing community college, we now have a healthcare college, and we have a liberal arts college. I, I, I don't know very many towns of 25,000 who have one. Fortunately, I have two. I know very few who have three that are all different enough that if we work together, can really do amazing things. And the last thing, let me just say, on a liberal arts degree, there have been a lot of studies. So when we talk about value of a liberal arts education, Georgetown Center for Work does a study on economic impact. When you look at over the arc of one's lifetime, the 40-year arc of work, as opposed to the first arc of work, when you look at 40 years of it, liberal arts graduates are among some of the highest earners in degrees. It's one of the best degrees for lifetime earners. And so we have the data, the evidence to show it, actually. So, But it's a span of time, not necessarily the first job out that you won from the college. So it, it's over time. And it's because of those additional skills to move and to flex and to try new things um, that we see that growth. So it's actually, you know, if someone says, well, will I earn? The answer is actually yes, right? We have the data to show that. So we want to make sure we're very clear about that because that is meaningful um, and important to students who are taking out debt to invest in their future, right? We should be able to talk to them about the return on that investment in the ways that we matter to them as well. All right, one, yes? Um, how do you recruit the foreign students? Yeah, so we sort of do it in two to three ways. The, the way a lot of schools try to do it initially, and it's not been successful for schools like Hastings, is to sort of cast a wide net. There are recruiting agencies out there that you can sign up with, and then you get added to their portfolio. And they sort of just go everywhere. Um, and so sometimes that can work. But you really, it's brand recognition, name recognition. For us, it's personal relationships. So where we have been most successful is where, again, we have a graduate or an alum or an organization that already has a connection to the college or is interested in that connection. And so for us right now, um, we have a relationship in the Bahamas. We have a number of students from the Bahamas on campus. It's our, our largest growing number of students. And then the other area you can see it. And some are coming to participate in athletics. Some are just coming. So it's great. We're looking at some additional ways to try to replicate that relationship um, that be very specific about where we go next. And then a lot of it has to do with just either we have international agreements. We have a partnership in Ireland that will welcome Irish students to campus but we also go to Ireland. And then the other is through athletics. So if you were to take a look at um, our men's soccer team roster, for instance, or some of the other rosters, you're just gonna see a number of international students who wanna come complete their education in the United States, wanna play highly competitive soccer and have that be part of their experience, and they wanna do the international travel. So that really is where you would see sort of the sorting. So it's not a a broad brush approach at all. It's actually very targeted, very dedicated to certain areas. Um, now on the soccer team or elsewhere where we might have athletes coming in, they may come from any country, um, but we also have some specific initiatives sure. like with the moms. Yeah, and again, if you drive by, I think this is when a, it, this um, was constructed when I was when I was away from Hastings for those years. That global walkway right at the end of the main street is just stunning to say, you know, we're on the plains, but of the world. And you see that, and when our students get to raise those flags, it's incredibly mm -hmm. meaningful to them. It really means a lot to them. It's, it's one of the best celebrations we do. Yeah, Just thank to throw you. out to the campus too, the outdoor spaces, and I yeah. will here could tell you more about yes, all of that. Yes, the arboretum. That, that, that whole idea that it's an arboretum, and there's so much learning just in that whole process yeah. too. So many ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had um, a visitor from 
and I think I have it in my reports for the next hour because it just happens all the time. So it's not even like I have to change it. Um, that we had a history professor who spent most of his now retired in Western Nebraska, but spent most of his career I think, in New York at Cornell. That's a cool place. Um, came just to visit the college, so we got in the golf cart and we took him around. And he just said, this campus is just stunning, right? It is just beautiful, the trees and the arboretum. And it belies what you think the campus is going to be. It really is like an iconic New England college here in Portland. Um, it is just gorgeous, right? And we continue to improve. But Will, yeah, you and colleagues, <laughs> right, writ large, have done so much to invest it. And just Paul Dooley and Paul Julius Dooley, yes, and his groundskeepers. They are just phenomenal. Yeah, so it, it's and, and we just and we hope we continue to see that when this you know when the closure of Ninth Street when it finally was able to happen, you know the one thing it did was create a continuous pathway from Hastings all the way through the 120 acres without having to cross trails, and so it is really nice for our students, our employees. It's wonderful for the community to come take a walk on that campus. So we're actually having more conversations. We have some students who you know annually now come up with ideas for improvement. And one of those conversations was around some murals and lighting and everything else to make, you know, make Hastings like Hartwell Park or like Fisher Found or something, make Hastings on a more regular basis, the college itself, a destination place for community members, mm -hmm. right? To create additional visual interest. It's beautiful during the day. How could we also create that interest at night to do some other things? And whether that's highlighting all the bronzes that are on campus or else, yeah, it's just gorgeous. It's just a lovely story. So, yeah, the outdoor spaces we continue to focus on. Anything else I can answer? Sharon, I never did get to the prepared script. Is that <laughs> I, I've got to ask from my, from my perspective. You, you used the word meaningful. I was going to tag that, and you went on to another topic. So I'm full of ideas here. But I'll call it the path to discovery, for lack of a better term. Uh, for the youngsters who are at the middle school, high school level, and they are finding their path, um, lots of them wait till they get to college. <laughs> A lot of the parents wish they'd decide earlier. And we know the process goes on throughout life. Um, there are some wonderful things in the summer, I know, Hastings College does. Yes. And are there opportunities for people to help make that work for a lot of kids? Yeah, so I think, um, thank you for the question, Sharon. So summer at Hastings is no longer just a whole bunch of students who are taking summer classes. Um, we'll meet the needs of those that do, but a lot of students that are back at work or they're going home and then that are continuing their education or they work in summer or do something else in the summer. So what we have seen, and we've always seen, that we've been very successful at running a bunch of athletic camps during the summer. We've got phenomenal facilities, the plants there, let's make use of it. But over the past number of years, we've created what we are using the general term. It's really specific to the program in open space and art and theater and music. But we've used that concept to say, how do we create more open space opportunities for students in the summer? And how do we get them on campus in a meaningful way to explore interests, just really to come to explore um, and show them the variety of educational opportunities that they might have, instead of assuming that if I'm going into one field, it's only sort of this part of that, that's all I can do in this field. And so we've talked more about, again, if we were to do score vision in the summer, it will become more of one of those open spaces. We're looking at also, um, Reverend Doodle, our chaplain, how do we use summer more as well for her work? So I think you'll continue to see the college try to use its facilities and open as really as a welcoming opportunity to explore and to really support what we do best. And so those are on the horizon. Uh, again, a number of already happening. We've got a number queued up that are interested in trying to figure out how to do that as well. And then we still run successful athletic camps and everything else. But it really is trying to create that space for the other parts of, of the campus that we have. And what we also are looking at, so Susan Miski and you know, with Hastings Public Schools, we're just talking in the community. Brian has, we've already got healthcare education pathways in Hastings, so we already have some that work. Brian uh, in Lincoln is an embedded partner in one of the two new high schools in Lincoln and Lincoln Northwest. So that is a dual credit program in healthcare. There are specific, if you're in the healthcare pathway program, it starts in ninth grade. There are actually embedded sort of healthcare opportunities within the standard curriculum. <laughs> and then in the junior and senior year, the students can accumulate dual credit. It's even dual credited around A and P, um, which is, is rare in high schools. 
And then they also have opportunities to shadow in healthcare, to be mentored by current healthcare students, to meet with physicians, PAs across the entire healthcare spectrum, to find out that healthcare as an industry, the field is wide. It's not just one or two kinds of jobs. There are plentiful ones. They all get their CNAs. Many have gone on to take their phlebotomy, and they're already at work, and they're helping them work in the system. So it's an embedded partnership inside the high school, their skills labs and everything else. So Brian is the healthcare partner of the public schools. Okay. So we're just sort of asking. Community College in Grand Island does a great job as well in healthcare. We've got a number of healthcare things happening in Hastings. It's just as there are to coordinate all of that work, particularly now with the new educational space, is there a way to do that? So conversations are happening, and so that would be the high schools, you know, thinking about middle school, how do if this is valuable to us, then how do we embed it, you know, with an existing program? So more to come on that if people are interested. We'd love to do it. It's been very successful so far in its first two years. Right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.